Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hey folks, today we have an interesting ink to show you. Uh, Platinum, a little while ago, came out with these Platinum Classic inks, and these are all Iron Gall inks. This one's called Citrus Black. It is uh, the first one I'm going to do in this series. Uh, not the last, though. I have another few that are actually inked up right now. But this one is the most dramatic of all of those uh, inks in terms of color change. So the interesting thing about Iron Gall is that it's... Um, well, it's got gallic acid in it. It's very sort of old school kind of ink, and they do tend to be very water resistant, and they tend to perform well on crappy papers, and they also tend to change color a little bit over time. Uh, if you've been watching these reviews for a while, you'll probably have seen um, Roaring Klingner's Salix, which is one of my very favorites. I haven't done too many iron galls, though, and so uh, this one is one that I want you to see. Uh, I want you to see it at work. So here we go. We'll switch over to that right quick. This is me writing the review. All right, you can see as I start to write here that this is a very, very pale sort of ink uh, as it goes down on the page, but then it darkens very quickly, and that's why I want to do this as a live one because uh, you can really see what's going on. Some of the others do have a bit of, a bit of change. Uh, I've been writing with uh, the Cassis Black as well, but that one is much slower, and it's not really worth watching in real time. But this one totally is. This is the coolest effect I've seen from an ink yet. So check this out. I mean, that's pretty neat. That's that's one of the cooler effects I've seen from an ink. All right, back to the review. Okay, so that's what it looks like when you write with it, which is pretty awesome in terms of change, right? Uh, you can sort of see it change actually as you're writing with it. And the pen that I was using in that review is this one right here, which is not a particularly wet pen, uh, but it does have pretty good flow. This is a pilot vanishing point. This is the um, guilloche pattern from 2017 or 2016, 2016 maybe. Yep, definitely 2016. Uh, but this is a beautiful pen, I think. And uh, I didn't love the nib, so I got it altered a little bit. I have it listed here as a medium SIG, and that's kind of what it is. It's not exactly a full-on SIG, but I did have uh, my buddy Jim Rouse take a look at it because it wasn't working right. In any case, this is what you end up with after a while. Uh, I recorded that video about an hour or so ago, so this bit has been aging for about an hour. And as you can see, it is a pretty... Uh, I guess it's a really interesting color. It's kind of a yellowy, blacky green. This bit up here, actually, I wrote a few days ago, and I forget when. I meant to do this review, and I said, oh, I gotta need to film it, it's a whole thing. So uh, this has been there for quite a while, and you can see it gets much darker over time. It's a pretty impressive color change on this one. None of the others have anything close to this level of change. Uh, and then this one over here is just the swatch that you saw go down, and you can see that age in uh, real time too, which is really neat. Um, these are a little bit expensive at 60 mils for 25 bucks, but that's actually not all that bad. And this ink is pretty darn cool. So you've seen it change a bunch of times. Oh, and these are the youngest yet. So you can see the change from here to here to here, right? Just kind of, this is sort of the end state, I believe, of this ink, uh, which is really dark. And one of the interesting things about this particular ink is you can barely see it when you, write, when you start writing with it. Like, it is such a light yellow that I thought it was gonna be total garbage. But as you write with it, you see it change, and it's totally neat. So, uh, this is not my normal paper that I have these on. This is um, a Mormon pad, uh, but I thought for this kind of small form review, I thought this would work pretty well. Uh, and the ink soaks in a little bit more than it does on Rodeo because it's not as coated. Uh, but still, nothing on the back of the page. I write here that it works really well on crappy paper. It totally does. Here is some crappy paper. This is the uh, typical Staples 20 pound that I always use. And you can see here, no problems with uh, feathering, no problems with spread, it all looks very tight. And then on the back, just nothing. So up here, this is Robert Oster's uh, Frankly Blue. I did a little bit of that. I haven't actually reviewed that ink yet, but it's coming soon. You can see a few dots coming through there. But here, 
I promise, that's the other side of this page. There's just nothing there. So this is extremely good behavior. If you want an ink that looks kind of quirky and is fun to write with and does work really well on crappy paper, this might be the one for you. We gotta test the water resistance, but I, I think that's gonna go pretty well. All right, let's go ahead and look at water resistance right quick, and then we'll look at chromatography and we'll look at some, uh, some, uh, some comparisons. All right, so I wrote this about an hour ago, as I said. Let me go ahead and put this down. And you can see a little bit of it coming up, sort of in a highlighter yellow color, which is interesting. I am expecting this to have some water resistance, but I don't know at all what it's going to look like. So I'm, I'm awaiting this with bated breath. Okay, that's enough bait. Yeah, get that off of there. Yeah, this paper's not quite as water resistant as Rhodia is, so I don't want to get the other pages wet. Is you're working really well. Oh, that's really interesting. Look at that. Yeah, neat. Oh, so on the back, you see it's a little bit wrinkled, but still nothing coming through. And then on the paper towel I used, you can see there's definitely some yellow, some like sort of highlighter colored yellow. But on the page, all that's really left is this, which is kind of neat. I mean, look at that. It's totally neat. It leaves like a, it leaves the black behind. Uh, it's kind of a grayish, brownish, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with like kind of sepia tone actually is what's left over. So that's really cool. But like I said, this is going to be water, water resistant at the very least because of the iron gall uh, factor. Um, that means it is a little bit acidic, but it's not, it's not bad enough to uh, harm any pens. I've actually had this ink in some pens for a couple of months and it hasn't caused any problems. Now, here's the caveat. I have not used this ink in anything without a gold nib. Uh, because steel nibs and that sort of thing could be corroded or affected by this ink. But I have not had any evidence at all of uh, corrosion or other kinds of problems in this nib or um, in the converter or anything like that. Everything looks fine. So I would say these are pretty safe to use, but on the safe side, use it in gold nib pens and you won't be sorry. All right. Okay, let's look at the chromatography right quick. And this is what you end up with after a while. I did this, uh, I don't know, about uh, 30, 45 minutes ago. So it's totally dry. It's as far as it's going to go. It didn't go travel very much despite leaving it in the water for longer than usual. You do get a little bit of that sort of gray-brown sepia color down here at the bottom. And then sort of the yellow that comes up the page a little bit. But uh, not, a whole lot of, uh, not a whole lot of movement, actually. Compared to some other inks that end up up here, this really kind of sticks around, even the yellow bit. So that's pretty darn neat. All right, let's look at some color comparisons because this is a weirdo color. I've sort of got some weirdos to compare it to. There's the citrus black right there. This is, of course, a coloring uh, coloring card. Um, now let's see. Let's do some yellows right quick just to set them apart. So here we go. These are two bright yellows. It's Diachimensis gold yellow and Toucan primrose, both of which are nice bright yellows. This one is very usable, actually. It's a pretty impressive yellow. This one more of a highlighter -y sort of ink. But not even close to those, of course. No surprise. Let's put it up next to something a little bit orangey. That's Private Reserve Buttercup and Robert Oyster's Yellow Sunrise. Both pretty inks, but yellow, nothing like this. Oh, too many things. There we go. So let's put it next to some things that it is more similar to. And here are two that I found in my collection that were at least kind of like that. They're both... Uh, not, neither of them is an exact match. Both of them are more brown than anything else, I think, compared to this. But this citrus black does end up looking sort of yellow, green, blackish. It's really cool. And then um, this Kyo no Oto ink, uh, Yamabukiro, maybe, uh, which I've just gotten. I haven't actually had a chance to put in a pen yet, but I just got this from Anderson Pens. And then Sailor's Kobe 22 Frontier Gold, which I got from a friend of mine who has a ton of ink samples that she, she, she likes to share. Um, so... Uh, these are kind of close, but I, I mean, none of them are exactly the same as Citrus Black. So I think this is a unique ink. I don't th think I have anything that looks like this. And I looked through all of my cards of all the inks that I have, and I think I've got most of them cataloged now. So this one, a darn cool ink. Definitely worth a check out if you want something weird like this. It's also one that I've shown my friends a few times. And they've been like, oh, wow, this is really light. Holy crap, what's going on with this ink? That's what happens every time, and I kind of love that reaction. 
Okay, so this has been uh, Platinum's Classic Citrus Black. Thank you very much to Anderson Pens for sending this out to me for review. Yeah, you can find this on their site. You can find this at Pen Shows. You can find this uh, at your favorite Platinum Ink dealers. But uh, it's going to be about 25 bucks for that little bottle. And I don't have one to show you, but it's a cool little bottle. Uh, so check that out, and I will see you all later on. Hey, was this video helpful? Did it help you find an ink that you might want to check out or one that you might want to stay right away from? Well, if so, click that subscribe button there. Make sure you click the bell icon and see when I go live, usually on Friday afternoons for just a little bit of pin chat. And uh, hey, if you're feeling real awesome, click that Patreon button and become a patron of this blog and channel. Help me keep it going.